Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Our Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you because you are here already. We thank you because your presence is already with us. We believe that you have gathered us to you. And we are pleading that your power will rest upon this meeting. We pray, Father, that you will give hope and courage to every one of us. We ask that the spirit of truth will break forth upon us with a new strength, a new power to continue. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. We are trusting you that you will do much more than we could ask in the course of this meeting. Our desire is that your people will go back with fresh understanding of your purpose for them. Those that are still hurting, we ask you, Lord, to please minister to their hearts. Those that are still needing comfort, Father, we ask you to send them comfort in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask you, Father, to help us now. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let me begin by welcoming you onto this important meeting. We want to believe that it is God that is gathering us like this. And God who is bringing us together has something to say to us. When you begin to read the Bible, you will discover that God has great provision for widows in the Word of God. In the community of Israel, God recognizes widows as a very, very special group of people. Actually, in the Old Testament, when they are making their harvest, God specifically told them they must not finish their harvest because of widows who must come and collect their own. So we believe that God has a great provision for several of us, even though things that had happened to us could make us to look desperate as if God has forgotten us. God has a plan. Tonight, I would like to share a story with you and I will support it left and right by some stories of widows in scriptures. I want us to turn our Bibles to the book of John chapter 5. John 5. We will read John chapter 5. And I would like to read from verse 1. And we would like to read down to verse 9. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Beth in Hebrew Bethesda, 
having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water, was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there, and he knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made well, and he took up his bed, and he walked. And that day was Sabbath. May God bless his word to our hearts in Jesus' name. Now, you may be wondering what is the connection between this story and our gathering tonight. You may be saying, what are we going to learn from a man that has been crippled for 38 years? The first thing I want you to know is that several times people have had serious issues that have crippled their lives. So many vision has been crippled by different situations in life. And one of these very terrible situations that has crippled several people in life is the loss of a husband. I know that there are several of us sitting here tonight that by the time your husband left, that was not the time you bargained for. And that was not the situation you were looking for. And it brought a kind of crippling onto one's life. It brought a kind of difficulty into our lives. Some of us, what we wanted to become in life was immediately scattered. The kind of things we were expecting that we would do for our children, the kind of things we were expecting that we would be able to establish in life, the kind of things we were expecting that we would be able to do with our lives, everything got scattered and crippled. I know there are some of us that you are looking back and say, if not what has happened, I know what I will have become today. There are some of us that when the situation took place, even our in-laws, they misunderstood. Instead of them to be sympathetic, some behaved in a very unbecoming manner. There are some of us that men that used to move around our husbands when they were alive. It did not take one month after they were left that those people also forgot about us. Now the situation where the head of a family is suddenly cut off can, can become a crippling experience in the life of any person, in the life of children, in the life of the wife, in the life of all those that are depending on such a man. Now, I don't know what crippled this man for about 38 years. The Bible says for 38 years he was crippled. He had nowhere to turn. And for these 38 years, he was on one spot, seeking deliverance, seeking intervention, 
seeking something that can help his life. For 38 years, he saw some of his classmates, some of his age mates, they seem to be progressing. But this situation brought a setback onto his life. But that was not the high point of that story that I want to share with you briefly tonight. What is the high point? Now, the Bible says, on one blessed day, the Lord Jesus Christ came to that place. You can imagine several people were in that place waiting for an angel to come and move the water. Waiting for an angel to come and cause things to happen. But the Bible said, when Jesus came, he saw this man. And he noticed that he had been there for a long time. He noticed that he had been in this condition, he had been crippled for so long. And the Lord Jesus came near him. Now that is where I'm going tonight. Are you hearing me? Now the Bible said, when Jesus came near him, Jesus asked him a question. Will you be made well? Will you be made well? And the, 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 the man said something that I know is very common on the lips of widows. This is what I want to draw your attention to tonight before we pray. Will you be made well? And the man said, I thought he would have said, yes, I want to be made well. But do you know what he said? He said, I have no man. I have no man. I have no man. Many things happen in our lives. And every time this situation happens, the first thing that comes to your mind, I have no man. I have no man. Every time what your husband used to do, that you need now to do, and you suddenly remember, say, Kai, I have no man. When situation comes, and you needed a man to stand up and take the leadership, but there is no more there. And you had to go out on your own. You had to face a challenge that only a man should have faced. The question that comes to your mind is, look, I have no man. I wish I have a man. I wish I have someone to stand for me. Sometimes it is when the children are sent away from school. And you wish, you say, Kai, I wish their father was here. I wish my husband was around. They would not have been pulling me here, pulling me there now. Sometimes, even when the children, when, when they were announcing that there's a seminar on single parenting, I know several of you have serious experiences where when the child, especially your son, is beginning to behave very, very abnormally. Then it reminds you, say, Kai, if your father were here, if your father were here, will you have been doing this kind of thing to me? There are many, many times, many, many situations that you will likely want to answer like this man. Will you be made whole? You say, I have no man. I have no man. Several times when you feel 
somebody needed to go and defend you. What dawns on your heart immediately is, look, I have no man. I wish I have a man. I wish I have someone to speak for me. I wish I had someone to fight my case. I wish I had someone to stand on my behalf. But I have no man. But I want you to understand something tonight. I don't think I have too many things to say to you. I just pray that the Holy Spirit will put this in your heart as you continue this conference in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to know that even though you lost a man, it is true that you lost a man. But I want you to note, there is the man that you need. Hallelujah. There is the man. Please, I want you to note this. You lost a man. But there is what? The man. Not a man now. There is the man. Though we lost a man. But instead of a man, there is the man who is going to stand by your life and stand all through your way and fight your battles for you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said, why this man was there crippled? Jesus! The man of Calvary. The Bible called Jesus the husband of widows. Hallelujah. And he came, he came near. He came and stood by the side of this crippled man. And he said to him, Will you be made whole? Will you be made whole? And the man said, Look, I have no man. I have no man to carry me. I have no man to put me into the water. I have no man. Whenever the angel came and they were troubling the water, someone would have jumped in before I come because I have no man. And I know there are several things like this. But you will look back and say, Kai, how can me alone cope with all the challenges that is coming on my life? Sometimes you see some of your friends, some of your classmates, the people that you are growing up together before this thing happened. And you are likely to say, well, if I had a man, I would not have been here. But I want you to know, there is something the Lord is going to do for you in the course of this meeting. That no man could have been able to do. The Lord Jesus stood by him and said, okay, I am the man you need. I am the man that you need. I am the man that will help your life. I am the man. I am the man. And the Lord Jesus looked at this man. He said, Take up your bed now and begin to walk. I imagine how the man said, But don't you hear that I said I have no man? Don't you hear that I'm telling you that there is nobody to push me into that water? But you see, Jesus Christ was seemingly saying to that man, all other men, they can only push you into that water. And there is no guarantee that you'll be alright. But I am the man that you need. 
And the Bible said, Jesus told him, Rise up. Rise up. Take up your bed and walk. I don't need to push you into water. I can raise you up. I can carry you. I can do for you what you have been seeking human beings to do. I can lift you up from this situation. And that same minute, 38 year old problem finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said, and he took his bed and he began to walk. People did not know. They were now asking her. They were asking this man, How did you walk? How did you overtake us? How did you become strong? Has the angel come to trouble the water? Have you got someone to push you into the water? And this man said, No. I had no man who pushes people into water. But I have the man who told me to rise up. The Lord Jesus is going to tell you to rise up in the course of this meeting. What even your husband will not have been able to do, even if you were here, Jesus will do it for you in the name of Jesus. The extent to which no man can go with your life is what we are trusting the Lord to bring you into as we look unto him in the course of these few days. Now, but let's look at this story more closely. When this man met Jesus, and Jesus said to him, take up your bed and walk. Some people met him. <laughs> they said, who told you to carry your bed? Today is Sabbath. You are not supposed to stand up. You are supposed to be crippled. You are supposed to be sitting down. Why are you standing up? He said, well, I don't know. But the man that said I should carry my bed and walk is the one that told me and I'm just walking. Do you know what will happen after this meeting? People will be surprised. People will wonder, how did you make it? How have you risen up like this? How did you overcome this weakness? How did you overcome this trouble? How are you beginning to work now? There may be no clear explanation except that the man, as I will be praying with you tonight, there's one prayer we are going to pray together. Lord Jesus, help me to know you as the man that I need. Are you hearing me? Lord Jesus, help me to know you as the man that I need. Now, the book of Isaiah said, there's a promise God made there. I would like to read it before I go on. In Isaiah 54, there was a promise. Look at the promise of God. Look at the promise of God. He said, do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Did you hear that? What did God say you will not be? You will not be ashamed. He said, do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. I'm reading Isaiah 54, and I'm reading from verse 4. Neither will you be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth. And you will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, you will not remember the reproach 
of your widowhood anymore. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your redeemer is the only one of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. Hallelujah. Say, you will not remember anymore the reproach of your widowhood. God is going to turn it around. Those things that came to cripple your life, to cripple your ambition, to cripple your expectation, that brought like an arrow into our hearts. The Lord is saying, actually we lost a man. But the man that we need is coming to stand for you. He's coming to raise you up. And is coming to bless your life. Hallelujah. But there's only one thing that we must do together tonight. There is only one thing we need to do together as we pray together tonight. As this conference is beginning, if to say we know any other man, we will have been talking about him. But we know the man who understands so much about how you feel. The man who understands so much about the difficulties and the challenges that comes on your, on your way. That man, Jesus, is the one that says, I will stand for you. Is the one that says, I will fight on your behalf. Is the one that says, I will go with you. Is the one that says, Fear not. I will not put you to shame. Neither will I allow you to be disgraced. Now, but what are we going to do? And there was one widow in the Bible that did something that we need to talk about tonight. She was very, very young. I was trying to look at the life of Ruth. And I was very, very touched that Ruth got married to this young man. And unfortunately, her husband died when they don't even have a child yet. Are you following me? I had just visited a sister the other day who lost her husband a few days ago. And they had no child. And in their culture, it's like she has nothing. My heart was so broken because I look at the people, I look at the culture, and I look at what her husband's people are planning to do. I knew that if she does not have Jesus, they are likely to throw her away with nothing. And I have seen situations where there are even children. And they collected everything. And let the woman empty. Some will be so wicked to even remove the bed. And leave her with children. But you see, the issue that we want to look at this night and in the course of this week is that we have a man. What do I say? We have the man. We have the man. 
It's true that we lost a man. But we do what? We have the man. The Bible said, when Ruth lost her husband, she had no child. And she was left with a mother-in-law. I want you to understand what happens when a mother-in-law is also suffering the grief of the loss of her two sons and she had no one left. You know the tendency is for the mama out of sorrow to accuse the wife and say you are the one who killed your husband. There were even cultures where when a woman lost her husband, instead of they to sympathize with her, I have gone to, to a barrier where instead of the brothers of the husband to sympathize with the woman, do you know what did? They were beating her. They beat her so much in our presence. They were expecting that she should be knocking her head on the ground and be crying and be rolling on the ground. It was a very, very terrible challenge. But you see, God does not forget the reproach that widowhood brings to our lives. The Bible said, Something that roots me that I want to ask you to think about as we pray together tonight. The mother, the mother-in-law said to her, go back. Sorry for this thing. I hope it will be corrected tomorrow. Go back. Go back to your people. Go back to your gods. Go back to your idols. Go back into the world. Go back and fend for yourself. That is one cancer the devil would like to bring to every widow. Say, so what is the advantage of serving God? What is the advantage of following Jesus? Go back and live your life anyhow you like. But would that solve the problem? No. Ruth decided and said, no, persuade me not to do what? To go back. I will not go back. Your God shall be my God. And that was the greatest decision that Ruth made that turned her life around. Your God shall be what? My God. Now when you look at the book of Ruth, I want you to read the book of Ruth, if you can see it, for I pray. In the book of Ruth, chapter 2, it is what Boaz said about Ruth that I want to conclude this short charge with tonight as we pray together. If you can see the book of Ruth, I want you to open it. Ruth chapter 2. Ruth chapter 2. Verse 12. Ruth chapter 2 and verse 12. The Lord repay your work. And a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. Under whose wings you have come for what? For refuge. I want you to get this as we pray together tonight. What turned the life of Ruth around? 
It was not because she was running up and down. It was not because she was looking left and right. It was not because she was making calculation. She ran under the wings of the Almighty God. She ran under the wings of the Lord Jesus. She said, Lord, I have no other man to cover me. But I want you to cover me. I want you to spread your wings upon my life. I want you to turn and put me under your wings. I'm coming to trust in you. There was no hope when she left her country. There was no hope when she said bye bye to her old gods. But when she took a decision to come under the wing of the Almighty God to trust, God cannot forget. And I want to conclude by saying tonight, if you will run under the wings of the Lord, if you will put away your eyes from every other man, and say, look, Lord, spread your wings over my life. He will not forget you. He will do something about your case. He will fight on your behalf. Tonight, as we pray together, and as we release you to go and take your rest, and as we set you into this conference for the next few days, I want you to have this at the back of your mind. Challenges will come. Questions will arise. Difficulties may confront you. But we have the man. Under whose wings you can bury your head. He knows all about you. He knows what you are going through. And he knows how he's going to speak on your behalf. Tonight, as we pray together, that's the first matter I want to lay before you. This man, Jesus, is still coming by your side and is saying, and he will call you by your name and say, will you want me to make you whole? Stop crying that I have no man. I am here for you. Stop crying. I have no man. You have the man. But you need to come under my wing. You need to come and put your trust in my ability. There will be some of you listening to me today. That because of the situation that has happened. People have exploited you. People have taken an advantage. People that said, oh, now we know she is looking for help. Instead of them to offer you genuine help, they have used it to rob you of your dignity. Some of us who have put ourselves under condition and it looks as if if you don't just go about with men that you cannot make ends to meet. But I want to say to you today, we have the man and that man is Jesus. When Ruth ran under him, Ruth was not disappointed. When Ruth came under the wings of the Almighty God, God provided for Ruth. God reset the life of Ruth. You cannot know today that among the four women that were mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus, Ruth was one of them. As we pray together, and as we seek the face of God together with you, I want to ask you, will you put your trust under the wings of this man, Jesus?
Will you bring your life? Will you bring everything? Will you bring all your concerns? About your children? About your career? About everything? Will you bring it under the wings of this man who said, I will not forsake you. I will not forget you. Actually, you will no longer remember the reproach of your widowhood. I will become the man that you need in life. Ruth took a step. That was why we are hearing of Ruth today. Do you remember there was another widow at the same time with Ruth? Do you remember? What is her name? Opa. Do you hear anything of Opa today? Why? She went somewhere else. I'm sure she went about. I'm sure she went to trust in other men. I'm sure she went to trust in other gods. I'm sure she ran about. And she got lost. She got messed up. People cheated her and exploited her life. Her dignity was destroyed because she went out. Tonight, when Ruth took a step, it appeared as if she was foolish. But that was the best step anybody can take in that situation. And tonight I believe, and we would like to pray together. I just want to commit you to the Lord. I know in the course of these days, God will be speaking on different issues to you. But the bedrock of it is that we have the man. What did I say we do? We have the man. Even though we lost a man, but we have the man. The man of Calvary is the one that will not leave you. Just when you think, oh, I wish my husband is here. I want you to know that the man is there. Hallelujah. Just when you think, ah, how I wish I have a man here. If you look well, the man is there. And we are praying that you will know his presence from this meeting in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray together? I want you to pray. I like you to pray. Maybe you came here with serious heaviness of heart. Maybe the incidents that took away your husband has crippled you. Maybe things have not been balanced since that time. It is possible that all that you wanted to be was shattered. It is possible that every time the devil keep reminding you and say you like this, your own has finished. It is possible that you are here tonight. The sting of death is still biting. It is possible that when you look left and right, men have disappointed you. Relatives have disappointed you. Tight friends of your husband, they have abandoned you. They did not even find time to come again. That is true. But I want you to know today that there is the man, the man Jesus. Could you run and put your life under his wings? Could you pray tonight and say, Jesus, be my man. Be the man of my life. From tonight, be the man of my life. Let me know you as the man of my life. The man that will stand for me. The man that will speak for me. The man that will fight my battles. 
the man, the man who will neither sleep nor slumber, the husband to widows. Be the man, be the man of my life. Would you like to pray and give Jesus this opportunity to arise on your behalf? Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, give an increase to this instruction that these sisters will go from this meeting knowing that though we lost a man, we have the man. Lord, I ask that you will suddenly appear in their hearts, that they will know that you are the man, the man they need, the man who will never fail, the man who will never leave them alone, the man who can bring comfort unto their lives. Holy Spirit, please do this tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to pray with you now in the name of Jesus. As I pray with you, you will now pray for yourself. Holy Spirit, I just want to trust you tonight that the way you others didn't know that you came. They thought it was an ordinary man. But tonight I'm asking, come and speak to these your daughters one by one, individually. Let them hear you with the voice of assurance tonight. I am the man you need in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, this very night, do your work now. Do your work now. Do your work now. Thank you, Father. Thank you for hearing this prayer. So many may want to take a step like Ruth, who ran under the wings of the Almighty to seek refuge. Some have gone to seek refuge under trees. Some have gone under other men. Some sought refuge under boyfriends. All of this only brought them into more confusion. But tonight, Lord Jesus, as they take steps like roots, spread your wings over their life. Spread your wings over their case. Spread your wings over their situation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your stretching forth your hand again. Say, whosoever will, let them come. Thank you, Father. I know, Lord, you are here and you are here to do something definite. You are here to do something good. You are here to turn lives around. Do something definite. That when these ladies go back, they may know that they have, they have met you. Let your love and your loving kindness flow into their lives in a definite way. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Now before I go back, it is your turn now to pray. It is possible that when the calamity struck, you did not run to this wing. You ran to other places. You ran to other men. You ran to other things. Thinking they will be able to shield and shelter you. But even today you can look back. It has not been easy. Solution didn't come from there.
You tried to protect your children. But things didn't work out. Because you've not met the man, the man Jesus. It is only him that can help you. And he's still standing here today. And he's saying, Will you be made whole? It is not by running up and down. It is by coming to Jesus. I like to pray. As you are also praying. Would you like to take a step like Ruth? To say, Lord Jesus. I have tried other places. I have tried other people. I have tried other men. They have only cheated me. They have only exploited me. Could you imagine that there will be men that write in your grief? They will come around and say they want to help. And all they are looking for is how to use you and dump you down. They cared not. But this man Jesus, he wants to help you. As I stand here to pray, maybe you need to give your life to Jesus tonight and say, Lord Jesus, who else do I have again? I want to run under your wing. I want you to help my life. I want you to forgive me. Maybe because of what has happened, you decided to become wayward. You chose not to marry, but at the same time, you've been living recklessly, thinking that that's the way to get something. Every time that happened, you find yourself more ashamed than before. But Jesus is saying, those places are nowhere to go. Come to me. I will give you rest. I will give you rest. I will spread my wings over you. And I will cover you. Tonight. I see the Lord standing with passion. He's standing with passion. Say you don't have to go on like that. Let me reorganize it for you. Let me bring meaning to your life. You don't have to be in the hand of men here and there being tossed up and down like football. I can help your life today. Are you there? And you say, Jesus, spread your wind over me. Spread your wing over my life. Don't let me go out of this meeting without your comfort. Where are you? Can you please just step forth your hand and say, Jesus, spread your wing over me. Do something for me before I leave here. Come into my life. Let me know you as my friend, as my companion, as my Lord. Thank you. Can you step forth your hand as we pray together? You are taking such a personal decision. God can turn things around for you. The Lord bless you. Thank you. Can you lift it above your head as I pray? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Holy Spirit. Thank you. Please stand up on your feet. Let me pray for those that are lifting up their right hand. Let's pray together. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Look at the hands and the people that are standing before you. If you don't step into these lives, the enemy will make it useless. I pray.
plead with you tonight. Spread your wing over them. Your wing of salvation. Your wing of deliverance. Your wing of restoration. Spread it over their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Step into their life. Deliver them from the power of sin. Deliver them from every work of Satan. Do a new thing on their behalf from tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let this weekend of meeting, as we share together, as they study together, as they listen to your word, as they go through seminars and different, different workshops, do something eternal, a new heart, a new spirit. Will you give to this once in the name of Jesus Christ? Lord, I ask, put your mark over them. Put your mark of ownership over them. Put your mark of grace over them. Lord, I don't know, but I trust you. Transform them today. Make them new creation people. Give them a hope of eternity. Thank you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. For the rest of us, Lord, I'm asking that they will see you as the man. In raising their children, let them know you as the man. In facing the future, let them know you as the man. Concerning their healing, concerning their provision, concerning their need in life, cause them to know you as the man. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Please, Lord, lay your hands on them and make your face to shine upon them. Please, Lord, meet their needs. Let them turn from here and see the victory of God over their lives, over the children. Poverty will never follow them from here in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.